so what is going to happen to trading on the exchanges? Does it really need to change? Let's turn to our guest. We have Chuck Lieberman of Advisors Capital Management. He's the chief investment officer. We have Jim Glickenhaus of Glickenhaus & Company. And I'd like to bring in Joe McAlinden. He is a fund manager at Catalpa Capital, also has a long career at Morgan Stanley and Dean Witter Discover. Joe McAlinden, you've been following what goes on in markets for quite a while. Did your breath kind of get taken away yesterday when you see things like Procter? and Gamble go from 60 to what 39 in seconds yeah I'll say and and it was uh, it, it was a scary uh, period for about 45 minutes uh, uh, but it was but it was you know our, our our trader who's my son was watching the screens and all of a sudden he started to speak in expletives and and talked about uh, fat fingers because you could tell from the ticker what that something had gone amiss we still don't know exactly what but uh, it just reminds me of so many movies, that, bad movies, that were around for the last couple of decades about what happens when robots take over the world. And is this the situation in your mind? Do you think I, that I robots think, have taken over? I mean, algorithmic trading, program trading is said to account for what? Something like 60 to 70 percent of daily volume? Yes, that's true. And, but what you have to remember is how does it work, right? So there are feeds that go into the computers and then the computers run their algorithms and decide what to do next. Well, the feeds include the last sale. So when you get a glitch like that, all of a sudden it triggers the computers, which don't think with reason, like we sometimes do, although they now say we're 4% Neanderthal, I guess, right? Um, but the computers just go ahead and do it. And so they just put in massive sell orders in the blink of the eye. Chuck Lieberman, does this undermine confidence for the retail investor when they look at the stock market and say, gee, this is just like a betting machine. This isn't a weighing machine at all. Yeah, this kind of volatility is just awful for retail investors. They don't understand what's going on. They don't understand the technical stuff behind the scenes. Uh, this is all just shock to them. And it makes them very uncomfortable, and they tend to pull out. Uh, they tend to look for safety. So once again, uh, it may not be so terrible to accept 20 basis points on your CD at the local bank. Uh, at least you know the money will be there. And maybe as, you can sleep at night. And maybe you can sleep at night as opposed to playing in the casino in somebody else's casino where they know how the game is rigged. That's the fear that uh, the retail investor has. Jim Glickenhaus, come in on this topic because a lot has happened in Wall Street in the last 10 to 15 years to introduce a lot of technology. Do we need more middlemen, people who know true value, who are willing to step in and take the other side of a trade? Not not a machine, but a human being to actually participate? Well, I think we need people who can do math. I mean, every morning I'm shown huge computer runs, and I'll take one look at it for four seconds, and I'll just throw it back at the person, and I'll say, correct this. And they'll say, well, how do you know it's wrong? And it's just simple math. They'll do 10 times 20 and come up with 14 million, you know, and you'll just know it's wrong. I mean, I started uh, at my dad down on 30 Broad Street. We used to put the orders in these little glass tubes and screw brass caps on them, and I loved them because they were a vacuum machine. So as a kid, you used to put them in the thing, and it would get sucked and go through Broad Street down to the exchange. It's a lot different today, but people have to think, what are the, look, if Procter & Gamble really lost that much value in one minute, quite frankly, your only thing you could help you would be if you could hunt fish and, you know, camp out. It just couldn't be true. And I'd also take that rock so you can hide under it when you're not hunting and exactly. fishing. Exactly. I mean, it was obviously a mistake, and it was obviously stupid, and was obviously going to get corrected. It wasn't real. There was no nuke uh, that hit New York City, or you wouldn't have been able to watch your computer screen. So what happens next? Do we get new financial regulatory form that changes this, or do we introduce some special course in business school that teaches people how to do math? Uh, I hope we get people who can do math. I'm not sure that we will. I mean, all of these modern airliners that go into the ocean are very computer-driven, scarily enough. And a lot of the older planes and older pilots who learn mechanical things where they touched it object and it moved a rudder in the back as opposed to a computer telling it what to do. I think they were better pilots. Joe McElhinney, come in on this because you're a market technician. You look at charts. The charts are supposed to tell you everything you need to know. Well, I, what the problem is that, that the, the charts, of course, are just extrapolated. It's like looking out the rearview mirror as you're driving your car to see where you've been rather than thinking a lot about where you're going. And what exacerbates it is when the, when, when the, um, the, uh, the computers begin to do this technical analysis for you, um, they don't think. They don't think about what they're seeing in the rearview mirror. They just, they just project.